Alright, welcome back to part 4 of the sound test scene that we're making for RPG Maker. Now, as you may have noticed, I have not uploaded a tutorial in quite a long time. Probably about a month. A month. So, I have somewhat forgotten what I was supposed to be doing for this scene since the last part. So, if I'm a little rough, yeah, that's why. Now, from what I remember, I needed to do... We need to do some modifications to the uh, sound information window to make it more appealing because the lines weren't exactly good. Uh, the second one being we need to implement the uh, number uh, the number implementation to position, volume, and pitch. So, with that in mind. Let's try and get the easy stuff out of the way for now. All we have to do at the moment is fix up the text and it doesn't really seem to be that hard. Now, I find out here I did. Yes, I did. All right, we have our window stuff set up here. Now, just like with all the other stuff we've done up to this point, we can use a word wrapper because a word wrapper works just fine for this. Now, I still have the word wrapper we made from tutorial 35 or 6, one of those two. Um, it's the exact same, only I modified a little bit for my skit script, as you can see here. So I'm just going to grab it and I'm going to put it back in because it's the exact same thing we already made. Just a little bit uh, different. Uh, there you are. And there you go. Post it. Alright, now we need to change that stuff. Alright, it doesn't take in a bitmap because it already is a bitmap. All I have to do is change this to contents. Because that's what the bitmap is called inside of a window. Um, oh, yes, and there too. Contents not width. Okay, so there's the word wrapping done. Now, all you have to do really is just go up here and go in word wrapping text and that should fix the uh, issues that were already there now we can customize this a little bit because now that we um, have that out we can actually make we can actually change the font itself so we can have a font that has shadow a different size different color or even um, an outline um, for example I did a holy effect for my morality meter so if you were really high morality your title would uh, have an outline on it which I could probably show you plates the game all right so you have here you have effects towards the text so this is evil so it's blowed out it's random so we'll wait for it to get to uh, some sort of Really high one? Nope, not high enough. Too high. Come on. Okay, screw it. Um, where's that random stuff? I'm gonna change that to 200. Not random, you are now 200. Okay, sure. And there you go. So now you can see the outline towards us. So you see how it has a purple outline but a wider inner center? You can do that for your, uh, for any text. So we can do that for our music scene if we want to. I will leave that up to you if you want to do it or not. I'm personally not going to do it because the information for sound is not that, you know, important. It doesn't need to have a holy grail outline towards it. Alright, so if you want to put it in, go for it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go up to here and I'm going to do uh, modify font. Um, change font. Set font. Set font sounds better. Def set set font. Alright, so the font itself is just going to be contents dot font. Now, if 
font has some things it can do. So, well, I already said that. What we should do is go to the help file, search up. Hang on. Search up font, which should come up with a bunch of things it can do. All right, font exists, and here we go. So you can change the size, you can make it bold, italic, outline, which is what I was showing before. Um, maybe, or maybe we'll show. Don't remember. Oh yeah, it was, it was our color. That's what it was. Um, shadow, and then the color of it. So those are the things you can change. So for the sound thing itself, let's change the size to something like. I suppose we can leave it at 24, or we can change it to 18. 18 sounds alright. Um, yeah, we can put an outline on it as well. See what the outline looks like. So let's do that. Contents dot font. Uh, contents dot dot font dot size. We'll make it equal to 18. Then we'll go contents dot font dot shadow. Is equal to true. Okay. Now we just go set font before we draw it. And if everything goes according to plan, that should be fine. And the five method word wrapping for that. Okay, and why is this? Because you have self there. Right. Remember the difference between modules and classes? That was one of them. Show me. Hmm. Um. Okay, the word wrapper isn't working, and there is no shadow, or the font size is not the same, not what it should be. Um. This is something that a base likes to do, doesn't it? Ha. All right, there it is. All right. So that's not working, and the reason why is because draw text underscore ex in window base likes to redefine what font there is already. So we can redefine it again, telling it not to redefine our font, please. So let's do that. Don't redefine our font. All right. Just remember, when it comes to redefining methods and classes, if you're inheriting from another class, you are not actually modifying the original when you override it. That's why we can do this, and not have to worry about any penalties. Okay. Play. Sound test. There we go. I don't see a shadow though, but the size is definitely different. Mm, that's probably not something that should be. I'm not sure, but I think that could probably fit on that line. Not entirely sure. Though it could be because of that. Let's try again. There we go. Cool. See? There was a couple of changes I made that I shouldn't have. Anyway. So now the word wrapper works, and we can change the size and text. Um, if we go back into our help menu and see what else we can do with font. Font. Um, we have, well, shadow. The default is false when enabled a black shadow will be drawn to the bottom right of the character. Well, I can't see it, but okay. Apparently it's, it's supposed to be working, but it, it, I don't see it. Anyway. Um, all right, size works. Let's we can make a bold. Change the color. Uh, our color. So our color. Just an example for now. Before we fix up the other stuff, we have to worry about. Okay, so back up here. Dot out color is equal to. Oh, okay. Here comes colors, and I don't think I've ever explained this before, and I'm probably not going to now. Um, this is just a test. 
if you know what um, RGB A values are, you can use them like this. Otherwise, don't worry about what color is. I'll get into that in another point. Alright, so we're going to make it red. Yep. Okay, play. Show me. Test. There you go. Now you got red outline. Looks awesome. Love it. Want to keep it? I'm probably not. I'm probably not going to do so though. But anyway, that's the font done. Sweet. All right. So fonts being set and all that stuff, and now basically our lines look a lot better. Um. It should be noted that this can be worked out to be much more smoother because as it stands right now, all we're doing is word wrapping around it. And so it's sort of alleviating the problem, but it's not fully sorting it out. What I would prefer to do is to shorten the actual window itself so that all information fits on fits in properly, but you can't please everyone. And to do that would require a lot more work, effort, stuff like that, so I'm not going to do it in this tutorial. So if you want to do it, go for it. Anyway, um, moving on, what was the next thing we have to do? We have to do sound, pitch, and position. Now, here is something that I have never personally delved into myself. This is number input window number input and you will have seen this be used when you have to enter a password for a code like when you go into an event and you say I want to enter in input number and your digits and yada 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 and stuff happens alright that's what input number does number input input number and I have never had to use this before Ever. So this is how I normally learn how to use new things. Instead of going directly into the code and taking a look at it, I see the hierarchy of how it's used. So let's do that and find out how it's actually properly used. To start off, we go into Game Interpreter. Uh, game Interpreter, where are you? There you are. And you just search up number input. And here's why. Because we know that number input is an event you can actually use. So that means that it's defined in Game Interpreter. Which is right here because I just searched it up. So set up num input and this is what it does. It says game message dot num input uh, variable ID sequel params yada 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 yada. Okay, that doesn't really help me that much. So Let's find out what number input variable ID is and see what that's used for. Alright, so game message has its own stuff here. Alright, then you have window number input which says at numbers equal to game variable game underscore matches dot num input variable ID. Okay. So what I can understand so far is that it works like this. Uh we start off as a game event. Start off in uh, game interpreter, or in uh, in this case, RPG Maker, using a control variable and saying, "I want digits, you know, one. I can't write for crap on a PC. Don't judge me. I want this stuff to go in. Why do I have a smiley face here? I'm losing track. Anyway, um, I want this stuff to go into variable ID ten. That's user defined. That stuff here. Now." From what I can see from the actual setup of it itself is it's saying this is window not window message window message thingy it's a global variable stuff like that you're gonna hold it into here and when this comes out and goes into that it's it's going to pass the value into whatever variable this was set to be which you change in game interpreter okay 
that's what I managed to understood, understand from it from those few seconds of looking at that. So now I'll take a look at the actual code. And the code basically says initialize uh, takes in the message window. Yeah. Okay. Super. All right. Super saying basically. Okay. So from what I can see from this, this window is always on your screen. You just don't see it. You always have a window number input on your screen, but you don't see it. It's always there. Starting number is zero, digits maximum is one, and this is equal to zero. Okay. So when does this get called with start? Search that up. Alright. That was probably not the best thing to search up, was it? Alright, let's go to game message because that's where it's defined here we go where are you window underscore number really not defined there we go uh, message that you are Number window is equal to number for itself, and we go number window. When do you get called with start? There you go. Input number. When's that called? That's process input. Okay. See how we're just going up the hierarchy now, finding out what happens where. Fiber main. Oh man. Not looking forward to the day I have to explain what fiber mean is. Not looking forward to it. Alright. Process imports, game message. Alright. Hmm. Process, uh, when it's showing you text, it also processes input. Clears your message. Shows your gold window. Nope, closes it. Uh, fiber yield. I hate that word, fiber yield, huh? Alright. I'm guessing that uh, message underscore win uh, window underscore message is not going to be helping me in this regard, so instead I'm just going to have to rework it. What does that mean? That means that I need to grab window number input, which is right here, and I have to redefine it. So let's find out what I have to redefine so far. First of all, I have to redefine start just because I can see this. Alright. Digit max is equal to game so messages dot num input digits max. Um that comes from your game interpreter. Meaning when you go here and you say I want to input a number and you got here the digits and you can go like ten, one hundred. I doubt you can go to one hundred, can you? Nope. A digits max. Ha. Huh. Okay. So your maximum is eight digits, and you input that in game interpreter. Same, same being for your uh, number input variable ID. This we need to redefine because we don't want to store this stuff in a game variable. We want to store this stuff in a local variable which we can access. So let's do that. All right. Starts. Let's do this. Nope, not start. We need to copy. Go down, Santa scene. Making a new class in Harrison, this one. And. Get rid of all that. Alright, window. Let's go sound. Test. Number input. I am so creative with names. All right. Now we need to read define initialize because in window number input, which is right here, it takes an argument of a message window, and we don't have to give it one. It doesn't need one. It thinks it does, but it doesn't. Alright, so we're going to redefine it 
Uh, we have to redefine the initial layers to tell it. Here, have a trophy message window that you're never going to use and no one likes you. you shut up. Okay, so let's do that. Um, it's going to copy all this. So I remember what I have to change. Def initialize. Doesn't take any arguments because I'm not going to force it to. Uh, message window is equal to that. Yep. That's when I go super and I say self. Now, I remember saying what self was before, but I'm going to explain it again anyway. Self basically passes itself in as a variable. It basically converts this to something. Um, so I can go self dot start, which would actually go down here and run this method because that's what um, that does. Just like if I was to go up here and I was to go dot start, that would also come down here and run start because it's the same thing, right? Although this wouldn't cause an error because this is this that doesn't quite work that way. But you want to say what I'm what I'm saying. Okay, so just takes in self, um, super itself. That's all the stuff it does. Self open is equal to zero. That's a good man. I like it that way. And deactivate. All right, sweet. So that's all set. Uh, let's just set up the x, y, um, width and height. So we'll go self dot x, and we'll make this equal to half the screen. So graphics dot width. Hmm. Divided by two. You can do the same for. Height as well. Go height. There we go. So now we've got the x and y set up. That's sweet. Fine. Um, our width and height itself is still zero though, but I'm not sure if that gets fixed when you show the actual window itself. I would assume it does. Otherwise, I don't know how you see it in the game. Let's go check it out. Um, during starts, update placement, and okay. Self dot width is equal to digits max times twenty plus padding in that stuff that doesn't really matter to me. Oh, okay. So that's what it wants the window message for. Message window for. So we can update its uh, Y position. But it doesn't really give a crap about its X position. Ha. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. Alright, so I'm gonna have to redefine that as well. That's fine. Alright. Redefined. South of Wolf's equal to digits max times 20 plus. I'm not going to change that. That seems like a good good thing. Um, self dot x equals graphics width uh, minus width divided by 2. I'm happy with that as well. This is my issue with it. Let's change the y. So just going to have self dot y. Self dot y is equal to. Do you want the middle of the screen or the top of the screen? I don't really know where I want it, so I'm just going to go 192. Because I remember that number from somewhere, so it's probably important. Alright, so 192, and we'll see where that ends up. So in that case, I don't have to worry about this stuff here. Except for super. Taste in self, because it doesn't require any window. Whew. Okay. Now that's all done. Digits max. This can be replaced with something else. We are going to give it arguments. Um, first of all is digits. That's just, that's what's going to replace this. So digits. So that's how many um, digits it has. At the moment it can have a maximum of 8. So yeah, you can have a maximum of eight. So maybe we'll script it. And you can give them. You can give it a higher maximum than just eight digits. I am not sure because I didn't fully read how this was set up. 
I'd like to think you can though, so I'm going to try it anyway. Alright, at number equals game variables, game message dot num input variable id, I had to change that as well. Number being, from what I can tell here, number is what it starts as. As you, that's what I can read for this anyway. So that's the input of what it, that's what it already is, and that's how it's going to show. So let's just do that by saying number, and you'll get to see what I mean for this in a moment. There you go, number, and that's just all the stuff it does afterwards. So that's these two are the only things I've changed. Okay. So I think we should be set now. Although there's one more thing I need to do to find out, and that is to go back into window number input and take a look at it. I need to find out when it's finished with um, this stuff here. So let's grab this. Find all instances of it and see where it's used. Hey, there we go. Alright, there we go. So the whole window itself finishes when this happens. Okay, so process, okay. And we can take in cancel as well, since that's not being used or anything. Suppose that means you can, uh, That means they want you to use it. Okay, so game variables do not equal that stuff. We need to find a way to make this return. Hmm. Okay, I know. This is what we learned in tutorial 30 something. And that is. Are you ready? Public. Uh, instance variables how do we use that? how do we use it? you say well there you go number or oh, how about result? result looks good attribute root of result and this is the results of user input and right here in initialize we go at result is equal to uh, nil, uh, nothing, zero. Okay, so now we just go at result down here is equal to at number. But yet yeah, you don't even need to do at result. You can just go at number at the top. In fact, I'm going to do that. I think that's a good idea. No, actually, I'm not. Just because I keep having second thoughts going from my head. Alright, and here's the reason why I'm saying let's not do that. Because we can have process cancel go at any time, so we can save what our last result was here when we when we actually confirmed it, rather than the last result we had when the user was actually changing things. As defined uh somewhere. Okay. So that's the window finished, I think. Now we'll go back up, we have to new it. Where's our starts? There's starts. Um hmm. I suppose we just set it here. Um setting oh number input. Alright. So at input or oh, actually, um, sound info. Just number input window. Silly. Because of that. <laughs> Dot new. So now we have that all set up, ready to go, and need to dispose of it um, dot dispose unless nope, unless you've already been disposed alright 
Now we've set that up. Now all we have to do is get the actual input result from the uh, number input thing, and we will be sweet. So for now, all I want to do is just have it set up to load. So I'm going to make it activate it. Dot activate just so we can see it. I think. Oh, and uh, start. Now our start was we inputted the number and how many digits it can have. So I'm going to start with 100 and just have the digits as 3. Just to see what it looks like. Okay, that cuts into a lot of... Windows. Okay. Let's fix that, shall we? Uh, we can change the Z, can we? But Z is equal to... Um, where's all the other ones located at? don't remember. We'll just go with 200. But as you can see, the 100 stops working, so if I change that to 148, and then have this as 8 digits, it will be a little bit longer. Sweet. There we go. So that stuff set up. Um, apparently, it looks like our thing is working. Let's. I want to try uh, ten digits just now. I'll go of nine for safety's sake, and see if I can actually get nine working, since the maximum seems to be eight. Oh, okay. Apparently I can get 9 working fine, so let's up it up a little bit and go 32. This should look really bad. And this is why scripting is so much better than inventive. Because I can have 32 input values. <laughs> Alright. I shouldn't do that anyway, because that would cause us uh, probably a stack overflow. Sorry, not a stack overflow. Uh, what's the word? An int can only hold a certain amount of numbers, a, a certain amount, of, a certain range of numbers. If you go, if you exceed it, you won't get an accurate number. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so. We do have number input starting, and that's fine. Now, we need to fix up the other stuff. Um, and that would be the sound. So, what, we're, what we need to do is have a boolean up here. Let's have a boolean. Um, currently. Uh, inputting is that require two T's or one? I'm just gonna have pretend that it does two. Currently inputting value. This is user by the way. So user currently inputting value is equal to false. Okay. Current set the sound is user entering value which is not at the moment now we'll do a new statement here so if that we'll put something in there in a second uh, this stuff we have to take a look at as well if sounds like command window to active yeah turn scene 
Otherwise, go back to whatever it was you were at. If not. Which means make this active. Hmm. We'll fix that in a moment. Do other stuff first. Okay. So currently uh is used to currently input a value, that is currently a no. Now we have volume, which is play sound and pitch, play sound. They they all play sound just like any other, and they shouldn't be. What they should be doing is doing different stuff. So let's make this happen. Um this is not play sound. This is They sound at volume. Okay. Def play sound sound at volume. And here we go. Um Where is the thing? There's the there you are. Okay. Number uh dot start. Remembering that the first one takes in a digit. Sorry, the first one takes in a number, then a digit. We don't know what the number is just yet, but we know what the digit is. The maximum you can have for volume is one hundred, so just have three. Because that's how many digits you can have. Okay. Hmm. Now, how do we get the actual value of the current volume? Suppose there is a way to do this. This would use structs if I was doing stuff normally, but I haven't taught structs yet, so I will have to settle for the copy out of using another class. Don't worry, I will explain structs at some point in the future. Class. Okay, so we have classes, and we're going to make a class, a uh, multiple instant class that holds in the variables we're going to use for sound. So class sound uh, sound test sound. Okay, def initialize, which takes in nothing because we don't really give much of a damn about it. What we actually want is we actually don't worry about that. What we actually want is to have its name. So this is an ATTL accessor. Name ATTL accessor volume ATTL accessor pitch and I think we'll just leave position as zero all the time. Okay. Sweet. Now, initialize. So def initialize. Just set these so these actually have something besides nil. Alright. So you can do 100 by default. Actually, better yet, pass in one of these. One of these is good. Hmm. What do we pass in? We pass in an array. Alright. Sound info. Now, I don't remember how to get the first name. I don't remember because I haven't used Ruby in a long, long time. So, I remember writing it down here. Each key, key name. Hmm. Okay. Now, how do we get the actual key name itself from within the file? That's my problem. Alright. Let's end the we're going to go name, 
volume pitch all right so set name set the volume and then at pitch is just equal to uh, pitch now if you're not following along with what I've been doing completely so far do not worry you will get it sooner or later definition lies yep all that other stuff okay so sound test sound let's do this stuff we're going to make an array of all the sounds we currently have here let's do that and we'll just go up here uh, down here and make it alright keep that there for now Great sound test files array. Okay. Where are you? There you are. Sounds like each do. And there we go. So, have an array. This array is going to be sound files, which is going to be a hash actually. So, sound files hash, or it can be name, it could be hash or name. It's really up to you, to be honest. Uh, hash on array. I'm going to have it as a hash because why not? Okay. equal to a new one of these that takes in volume name volume and pitch so name is just a key name because we already know what that is the volume is the actual thing which I find down here see I'm just going back to old code now because I don't remember half the stuff I already wrote where are you? Alright, sounds key name and then the other stuff. So that's default volume, if I remember correctly. Yep, default volume. And default pitch. Sweet. Where did you go? There you are. What volume? Now the full pitch. Alright. Not initialize. Why do they copy initialize? Sound test sound. Dot new. Alright. So now we have a hash that contains all of our sounds, their current volume, and their current pitch, as well as the name, if we need to, if we care about that, which we don't, so yeah. Alright. So now, whenever we want to know, whenever we want to pass in uh, our current volume for this sound, we simply just go... That should doesn't need to be space there. Um, here, and we'll just go number is equal to sound files hash uh, whatever sound we are currently on, which is here to s uh, dot, and here we go. We want to uh, uh, get the volume dot volume there we go and then you just pass in a number number and the di maximum digits is three 
and this will start this will start up the uh, number input phase for everything to run. Okay. Now we can do the exact same for pitch and position. So let's do that. The first thing we need to do is we need to add a couple more booleans as well. So we need to say which uh, phase are you right, currently in. So at currently entering volume value is equal to false. Run that screen pitch value pitch value equal to false. And currently entering position value. So you get a false as well. Don't worry, you you understand when in the moment what I'm doing. Okay. So now what we're doing is if you're currently inserting a value, which value you're currently inserting. Alright, so let's make a couple of methods for this. Methods that's deactivating stuff. Nope, I wanna go here. Receive volume value. Okay, so receive volume value. Do the exact same for pitch and position. Position. Okay, and now what we do is go back up here. User currently entering this. No, no, they're not. In fact, we should make that a method to be honest. Uh, def set uh, booleans. Just said booleans. It's a really bad name and I don't like it actually. Uh not set booleans. Um set input variables. There we go. Set inputs variables. Which has all that stuff, okay? So now I can go up here and I can place all that with that. I can do the same here too. It's all the false. Okay. So now give me that. So I need to use this. Just temporarily. Well I get this stuff. Is it there? If that all right, receive pitch value, receive position value, pitch position. Okay, sweet. So that's done now. Now, what else do we need to do? We need to deactivate the sound stuff. Sound select, sound play command window, activate. Okay. Hmm. Deactivate sound windows. Deactivate sounds command windows. D 
def d activate activate sounds command windows okay so now every time we input a number for these we also deactivate the other two windows alright the only one we've managed to create so far is the one for volume so if we go to volume we just see all this in motion alright volume Undefined method that for nil nil class. Now, why was that for? Oh, right, 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 right. Um, because I haven't called that. That's the start. We can make it here if we want to. Great sound files array. Sound files. Yeah. It doesn't actually do anything now because you haven't told it to. But we have the uh, our gateway. So now all we have to do is finish it up. Um Alright. Uh set input variables we need to actually get the result. So the result being hmm trying to think of an elegant way to do this stuff because it's not always elegant. Alright, while we're at it we'll just go play sound at pitch pitch That's pitch, pitch, great. Uh, place and a position. Position, we'll just have it as always starting at zero, since position changes really rapidly and really quickly. And position can also be nine digits. Okay, done. Sweet. So we've got all of them set up now. Cool. Great. Now we have to get the actual res the result from um we have to get the result from the number input window. So let's do that. We need to discover a way to bridge the two. Find out if it's actually done. Alright, we can do that with another attribute reader. ATTR reader completed. User finished input processing. Now we can do this two ways. We can actually go um is this window dot activated? activated or active, it's one of those two. Um, if it returns true, then that means that obviously the user is still trying to define, trying to input uh, variables. Otherwise, no, they're not. Alright. So. Otherwise, no, they're not. But that doesn't look very nice in code, so I, that's why I have completed here. Now, at completed is equal to uh, true. And it's equal to true because it's not activated. So during start, we can just go here and go equals false because now you are entering something. Now, when you go to process OK and that's done, you then go to equal to uh, true because you're now finished. Same for process and cancel because if you, even if you haven't entered in something, you're no longer entering anything in at all. So it assumes you're done. Equal to true. Okay. Oh, and that's um at by the way. Okay. Sweet. 
So now we'll go over this stuff. Uh, the results. We need to get the results. Set input variables, and that would be the actual sound, which is why we go back up here. This stuff, and this is where we play it now. We're going to play any actual sound test sound location, place. So, def play. And, and now you take in rbg bgm dot new um, dot new you take in your name your volume and your pitch which we do change dot play alright so that's uh... playing with that stuff and then we'll have default play and that's pretty much going to be the same thing but we change uh, from where it was normally to where's play sound there you are to these two alright um nope oh, names right default volume default pitch Okay, sweet. Now, here's one more thing. We need to include this. Otherwise, it will complain saying, I don't know what sounds is. That looks a bit shocking. I should clean this up. Play sound. Play sound. Play sound. Initialize. Public instance variables. Okay. Uh, that's all set up. One more thing left to do. And that is to actually get the value. Alright. So, dot pitch, receive volume, so dot volume is equal to this here, let me put window, dot result, dot result. Same for pitch. So dot pitch. And position. Hmm. Need to include another one, I reckon. So let's do that. We need to play sound. And this is position. Def play. Play position, and you take an argument of position. Same stuff as null, except now you take in position as an argument for your play. Don't worry, this is getting convoluted. It took me a while to uh, get my head around this as well. Play sound at position. Play sound at position. Need your results. All 
Alright, so now I got the results. Um, now I need to play it. Give me that. Let's play position. Sweet. As for you, you need to do um dot play which is a method same for you dot play method play sound position command yeah um as for you don't need to worry about you so much anymore dot default play now I think that should all be right I'm hoping that's all done nope AATR hoping that's all right volume Seventy. Nope, didn't change. All right. All oh, right, right. I keep forgetting. Um. Up here. And uh, completed. So dot completed. Because if you're not completed, then why would you bother checking and getting the value from it? Not much point, right? Now, what else do we need to do? That's another thing I forgot. Well, I forgot to uh, input which was which equals true. Equals true. That's pitch now. Pitch. Pitch. Uh, position. Same thing. So you go to true now. Position. Play sound still works, that's great. Alright, let's do volume now. Alright. Apparently volume isn't working, so we'll put a message box on score P in here and find out if and why it does not. Message box on score P gibberish so if we see dibber, uh, gibberish here on the screen we know that it appeared it worked at some point all right so receive volume value was never called now why not why were you not called I have a sinking feeling the other reason why it wasn't called is exactly because of the same reason I just fixed earlier. And that is that I have not said this to true. Silly me. True. True. Now it should work. And there we go. Alright, except for now, uh, ne neither of these two windows are active, so I can't do anything now. So I need to fix that. Um, I suppose the windows that I want to have reactivated is... 
the uh, play command window. So let's make that activated again. Um, every time you receive a value, dot activate, activate, all that right. Same for you, activate. with me and change the pitch to 100. Alright, so as you can see when I load it back up it has 60 as the value. Change to 80. Look at it again. It's now 80, right? What about our pitch? Oh, I just found a bug. Cool. Alright, before we go fix that bug, we need to test that position now. Hmm. Don't think position is quite working. Position does not seem to be working. Oh, I know why. I know why. Um, that should be a cliff note that comes with it, actually. Which reminds me of another thing I have to change. I need to input help files, help stuff, for when you change your current index, whatever is currently hovering over. Um, position only works with WAV files and .oggs, and I think with all the sounds that I am using for this, they're all MP3s, but give me a second, I'll see if I have an OGG. Alright, it looks like my Wincrest sound is an OGG file. So, this should work. Damn it, that bug again. Play. Now, Wincrest, I want you to play... There you go. Alright, so it doesn't let you restart. Back to the crest, change this value a bit higher, like about there. Alright, so you can change the position of OGG files and waves. So, that works. The entire sound process now currently works. The only thing we have to worry about right now is polishing and cleaning up code because, man, it looks absolutely freaking terrible. I don't like it. Um, I don't really have an excuse either, other than the fact that I haven't been coding in RGSS for close to a month and a half now. Um, yeah, so that's my excuse for making it look like crap at the moment and the fact that I'm trying to get it done quickly. Before I wrap up this tutorial with this uh, stuff, um, I will fix that bug, and that bug, quite frankly, is coming from that, I think. Uh, so when you press B on it, oh yes, alright, I know why. Uh, if input trigger B, and play sound window active. 
Alright, so when we press B, um, yeah, 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 yeah. I actually don't know why. Though I imagine it's something really, really simple. Which is what confuses me, to be honest. Um. Hmm. Oh, right. Silly me. It's as simple as that, really. And you can go, um, sound dots play cancel, I think it is. And now that bulk should disappear. Alright, so when you press input uh, B, it still plays the sound. So that is something else I need to fix. So let's go and make a little uh, checklist here. Checklist and, uh, no, not here. Do a top script. Stuff that needs to be done. Stuff that needs doing. One. Bug where sound still plays, even if you cancel from user input. Okay, that's bug one. Uh, second stuff we need to do is change help window text when hovering over. A new option. Um, also, refactoring code. Refactoring code. Uh, basically, it's cleaning it up. Cleaning up code makes it look nicer. Okay, that's all I have at the moment. Um, that's all I can think of that I need to do. Yeah. And perhaps maybe comment it a little bit too, because it looks... It, it doesn't... I don't think I've done a really good job of this tutorial explaining things, so I should probably write comments to show what stuff does, but... That's what the point of the tutorials are, so I don't have to do that. Anyway. Um... The uh, core stuff is done, aside from these three things, which you could probably do on your own, to be honest. Um, this script is finished. So, until next tutorial, stay safe.